Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is your boy Ray J coming at you with another bass lesson. I just got done the talk on phrasing and how it is crucial to your bass playing, especially uh, the creation of your own licks. Because I always say, and I believe, you know, if you play a lick, it's been played before. It's just, it's your take or your spin on a particular lick. And that's what we like to call, or I like to call, you just remixed it. Not all remixes are bad at all. So if you have a favorite basis or someone that you're influenced by, listen to their stuff, get what you can from that person and just make it your own. Or even if you don't want to touch it, it's just you like it. That's perfectly fine. Like if you have five different bass players that you really are influenced by, let's just say you just take something from each of them five and you incorporate it into your plan you don't change anything that's perfectly fine because that's still part of your own sound we think your own sound means you have to be completely you can't sound like anyone at all that's almost impossible everyone sounds like someone no matter how you slice it or dice it so don't get caught up in that like i did and a lot of people get caught up in it because you know a lot of people don't give the explanation of what it is to find your own sound so your own sound means you're making chocolate chip cookies there are certain things you need in order for it to be classified as chocolate chip cookies like you need chocolate chips and you're going to need some type of sugar but other than that it's all up to you and that's the same thing how you should look at you know playing bass and finding your own sound take something that you know um that you like another bass player does and you incorporate it however you want to. Whether if you change the exact lick or not. I mean, that's just how it is, man. You're not you're not going to go to jail for plagiarism. Someone is not going to find you at all. If anything, they're going to say, wow, I see your, your perspective and what you were thinking on that. That's what the true people would say. Not like, oh, you sound like such and such. Man, shut up. So, with that being said, I'm going to give you a few phrases out of my handbook that I got from just about any bass player I've listened to. And I want you to take it, if you want to, and incorporate it into your playing. And especially for those who are feeling stuck when it comes to, you know, creating licks or uh, being getting creative or just getting different ideas. This lesson is for you. And as well, if you're not like that, but you still could get something from this lesson. It's from you. So one of my favorite phrases... Well, I have like three or four. My first favorite phrase is, especially now, is so easy. And it's so it's jazzy. And a lot of phrases that I like sounds jazzy. They sound jazzy. And it's from the, the jazz uh, scale, which is. Right, so the jazz scale or the blues jazz is one minor, and I'm in E flat. One minor third, four flat five, five, seven, one. All right, some combination of that. All right, so my first lick I did was. All right, that's hammer on four to five. The second one is a slide. From the minor third to the third. So it's a third combo. If you ever hear me say the third combo, that means the minor third to the third or the third to the third, depending on how I'm using it when I say it. So this third combo, so four to the five, hammer on, minor third to the third. Then you're going to do one slide down to seven. And I'm using, look at my fingers. All right, that's my first favorite phrase. So you could even. All right, so it doesn't even all have to be played at the same speed, like consecutively. All right. All right, 
So anything like that, and I just just dropped it in like a, a shot run, just so you can see. So it's, and you see on the uh, shot run, I didn't use the four. I said, all right, and that's something too. When you phrase, you can either add a little bit, take out a little bit. So that's the first phrase. All right, my second phrase is. That's the third stack again. And it's just the third stack, minor third, third to the five. And it sounds like a lick. And those are two different phrases. But here's what they have in common. The first phrase, the target notes are the five and the three. So I did, those are the two notes I end on. So all I'm doing is five, three. But I just added, you know, little uh, stank notes. All right, now for this lick, the target notes three five. But it, like this one, I just added that minor third in to give it a little stank. So this target is three five. The first one was five three. This is three five. So something simple like that. I just told you the two hit notes. I'm just doing that little hammer on gives it a different feel, a different feel. So even in your, listen, I'm preaching to y'all, I'm ministering. Even in your playing, if you're doing like a hammer on or you're just playing, if you're not doing a hammer on or a slide or a pull off, try to incorporate a hammer on and a slide in your regular playing and just watch, watch, watch what it does. Watch what the Lord does. The Lord of the bass, which is still the Lord. All right, so that's my first one. My second one. Another one I love is both forward and backwards. Five, six, flat seven. I love that phrase, and I love this phrase as well. Oh, and the second one is just backward. Flat seven, six, five. And I love this as well. One, two, minor third in that back as well. Minor third, two, one. And you can play it differently. So I just gave you like four different phrases. And another phrase I like, which is like my first one I will always do is some form of... Flat seven, one, minor third, one, some form of that. Ah, so now let's just say I want to put some of these phrases together to make a lick. Can I do that? Of course we can, so watch. And I'm just using all the phrases I just told you. I showed you this one. I showed you this one. I showed you this one. Which is the same one. Minor third, third, five, three. Minor third, minor third, third, five, minor third. All right. So, and you also got this one as well. Four, one, minor third to the third. And if you kind of see the, the pattern, a lot of my phrases that I love to do, has to do with the minor third and the third. And you also got this, the chromatic walk up. That's three to the five, where you do four chromatically, four to the five, four flat five, five. All right, I just combined two different phrases I showed y'all into a lick. That's one. My first phrase I showed you. Now let's use another phrase. And that's just two, hammer on three, pull off, pull off. Ah. 
All right, and those are all the same phrases. I just showed you those phrases. I was just putting them all together. And that's another great thing. When you put a bunch of different phrases together, and if it's a, whether if it's in the, a, like, let's say the right scale or not, it's all depending on when you use the phrase that makes the difference. Not so much what does the phrase have in it. It's all about when you use that phrase. If you're using, like, a lot of phrases I just gave you, they have uh, minor notes, like flat notes, like the flat seven and the flat third. So when you're playing around a one and definitely the five, those licks go. Because those are... So I'm just playing a regular progression. One, six, two, five. One, six, two, five. One, six, two... Ah. all right and those are the same phrases i just did but it sounds like oh you just created a lick no i just gave you different pieces and I just put the pieces together. So, take any of the, the phrases that you want. If you just need it again, just rewind the video. Add it to your playing. Or even take them all and just add a lick to it. Or even if you don't want to use my phrases, just certain phrases that you love to do. Break them down. Deconstruct them, then reconstruct them. Break them down. Put it somewhere else and just see how it sounds. Because that is really the key if you're... If you're feeling stuck and it's like, man, I need to find something creative to do. Because I'm just tired of doing, you know, the, your, your minor pentatonic. I'm tired of doing something like that. It, that's just a minor. It sounds good, but it's like I need more. Phrasing is what you need. So, Because even in that. Add a different phrase. And those were just. All right. So hopefully that helped. If y'all got any questions, I got y'all. And let me know. You know, even y'all can just drop in the comments. If phrasing is something that you had to learn that made life easier or is if it's something that you never knew existed or anything like that just give me y'all feedback and y'all thoughts on not only a remixing but as well as how do y'all combine different phrases just to create tasteful licks and it's not even so much oh i came up with this on my own we all need help man i take stuff from people all the time because flattery is the most is the is a good form of respect or I, I forget the thing but y'all know what i mean all right so this is your boy ray j over and out